But one thing that you could perhaps do this summer or these holidays is go for a walk, perhaps a very, very, very long walk, maybe even walk the length of New Zealand, Cape Reinga to Bluff. Why? Well, a new walkway has just opened. It's called the Te Araroa Walkway, and uh, Jeff Chapel is the man. Would you say? Would you say you were the man behind it? Really? Yeah. I mean, you were. It was your creation, your your idea. Uh, as a journalist, I wrote the first story about it. You know, saying that it should be there, and uh, and it, and it, it ran from there. Really, this was back in nineteen ninety four. Ninety four, when I was uh, working on the Sunday Star newspaper as a books editor, actually, and um, yeah, yeah, it uh, it was a late night kind of article that I did when your imagination was roaming, and uh, and Bob Harvey, the who was in the Waitakere mayor, gave me a ring the next day saying, "Hey, you know, this is a great idea, and, and let's do the thing of forming a trust and pushing it along." Because you're a writer, um, but also I guess a keen walker as well, or an outdoors man. Yeah, yeah, keen walker, but not not in the tramping club sense. Like I'd already done explorations of New Zealand. You know, I just like getting out in the countryside and having a look at what's what and meeting the people. So I'd already, for instance, taken a house bus around the South Island and took a year to do it, just to push into all the little corners of the place and have a look and yeah. talk to the people and write the stories. So. I think I saw the trail as, as that sort of an opportunity to push into those same areas where people didn't normally go. So was there initially some momentum back there in the mid-90s? There was no momentum at all. Right. Um, uh, there had been in the 70s, someone had said, yeah, let's have a walkway, what they called a scenic trail. But that had just died a death. You know, at that stage, that was a government quango called the New Zealand Walkways Commission trying to push that. But they hadn't uh, really done it. So, mm. so when I came along... Uh, it was virtually a new idea at that stage. Had you ever attempted to walk the length of New Zealand at that time? No, I hadn't. As I say, I was doing what you might call slightly odd walks, like uh, when I was exploring, going out on Farewell Spit, you know, walking all day out to the lighthouse on that spit and then yeah. walking back and things um, for the sake of me and the lighthouse keeper, you know. And, <laughs> and, uh, or or it, just seeing what was around the next corner. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So so I'd done those sorts of walks, but in the course of making Te Araroa, the long pathway, um, popular, I did do, I did walk the length of New Zealand. Mm. So I, I, I designed the trail at one point, uh, about 98, I did that, and then walked it, even though, you know, it wasn't quite in place, as you can imagine, uh, doing a bit of bush bashing and things through some of the forests. and So I walked it really to prove it could be done mm. and put um, pictures, very primitive digital pictures at that time, up on the net yeah. and did writing as I went. And that was, you know, what can a journalist do to establish a long trail? Well, write about it, you know, and that's what I did. And how would you go about designing a walkway like this? How would you go about choosing where it goes? Yeah, what I did, we had a, um, a, a grant from the Tyndall Foundation, I think it was about 20 grand, and I said to the trust, look, I'm just going to throw a suitcase in my car. Mm. I'm going to go from top to bottom, talking to the councils, talking to Iwi as well, where they might want to go, talking to the Department of Conservation Conservancies, and just getting a feel for what's a good route through. And in some case, cases it's sort of impossible you know which way you're going to go you go west of Taupo and not east of Taupo why because there's already a good long trail running down the west of yeah. um, Taupo so was that essentially it was it is it um taking the the trails that are already there and just trying to link them all up I would say probably something over 30 percent of the trails were already running north south so yeah. it wasn't like you're starting from scratch yeah um I guess much like this the cycle way that, that they're talking about at the moment just trying <laughs> link those up. Uh, you're not. Uh, what, where are you at with the cycleway? Is, is uh, we're not. We're nothing to do with the cycleway. No, no. I mean, the cycleway is now a series of regional initiatives. Yeah. You know, usually around tourist hubs and things. Uh, so I think a, an end-to-end -end cycleway, if you like, is probably quite a long way off. Yeah. Um, you know, but and and we can go places where you can't take cycles. You don't frankly. feel that the walkway has been sidelined by. The cycleway and so Oh, way. definitely. You know, that came in as a uh, prime ministerial initiative. Yeah. What people don't realise, at the same time John Key floated that, he also promised uh, that he would finish Te Araroa. Ah. And indeed, uh, he, and, uh, and he recognised that it as something different. And uh, indeed, we got $1.5 million out of government last year to do the last of our tracks. Right. So the government has helped with uh, just finessing it. And is it DOC that are constructing the tracks that aren't there? 
Doc is constructing tracks that are on public conservation land. Uh. But the beauty of Te Araua Trust is we don't come with any baggage. No one hates us. You know, we're not the people sort of um, um, putting putting rates demands on people. We're sure. not the part Department of Conservation with whom you might have some sort of a grudge. So when we come along, we're better at negotiation probably through private land than anyone else in the country. Yeah, so tell us about that, about private land and, and how you negotiate that. Because, I mean, the, the, I mean, if there's going to be any tension anywhere, it's going to be in those that, areas, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, what you find is that um, uh, the private land people generally aren't particularly keen to deal, but you do strike people who will deal, and you have to do it with whatever whatever they will accept you have to do, finally. Your best option is a proper legal easement through land, but that's a big ask. You know, you're putting a corridor through someone's land. So, in general, we do a written agreement, but we will do, and have done in places, just handshake agreements. Now, mm. I studied how the long trails overseas were done, and initially, generally, they did do it on handshakes. And then, because it falls apart with a handshake, you know, the, the land changes ownership or something, and the guy says, well, I'm not bound to, you know, keep your trail through here. So, so I had a look at what they did, and generally speaking, you do handshakes, and then you let the trail settle in, and then, assuming it starts to disintegrate in parts, because your handshakes are falling apart, yeah. <laughs> then you either, you know, go another way, and the trail's already got enough momentum that it's going to work somewhere else, or you get in and, and, and do something that satisfies a private landowner, like buy a little land parcel through the land, and we're, yeah. and we're doing that in a number of cases. Where, where did you look overseas for examples of a walkway like this that runs the length of a country the size of New Zealand? Yeah, I, I had a Churchill Fellowship in 2001, and I went to the Appalachian Trail, which is the, you know, the great kind of symbol of long walking. It goes up the Appalachians on the east coast of America, went to the Bruce Trail, which is a big trail in Canada, Trans-Canada Trail, which is like five times as long as our one. Yeah. You know, but they, not that they finished it, but that's what they're trying to do. And I went to see some of the British trails, Hadrian's Wall Trail and Pennine Way type thing. Yeah. And of course, some of it isn't trail at all, though, is it? I mean, sometimes you have to say, well, there's a road here and it's kind of the only way you do. through. You do. And, and one of the things I found with the trails overseas was, yeah, sure, there are often road connections to what they call trailheads, you know. So if you're, if you're just going for a day walk, you obviously don't do the little 5Ks of road. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. start at the trailhead. But yeah. if you want to be a through walker and say, hey, you know, I've walked every metre, then you do. You walk up the road. Well, that's not so pleasant, but you put up with it because you're going to be off-road far more than you're going to be on-road, so away you go. Yeah. Um, have, have, has anyone actually done the full trial yet? We're going to talk about very shortly about the, the various sections, but has anyone done the whole thing? Oh, yeah. They're doing it all the time. Dozens, okay. literally dozens, went through last year. And what, you've, what I'm finding is there's a long trail culture overseas. People do the Bibbulmun in Australia, they do the AT, the Appalachian Trail, they do the Pacific Crest Trail. And these guys, who are very, very, uh, let's say, light on their feet, quick, um, I've met them and they have packs, they're tramping the length of New Zealand, right? Their packs weigh, fully equipped, six pounds, about three kilos. Yeah. That is light. They're not, they're not wearing uh, boots, they're wearing runners. These are the sort of people that are that are coming in, and they're almost like long trail professionals, huh. and they're teaching us one hell of a lot. You know, it hasn't been in the culture before that sort of thing. What, what do you mean they're teaching us? What, what, what they're teaching what us ultra light tramping. You okay. Know, well, that's one of the things they're teaching us. I mean, the other thing is they just bring a hell of a lot of uh, experience about how many k's you can do in a day. And, yeah. And uh, and and they're just very good talkers. I mean, they're typically people who are. Very interested in long distance tramping. It's a thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to come back um, and we will talk about the trail itself and the various sections, the sort of the, the easier sections and the harder sections, that kind of thing. My guest is uh, Jeff Chapel from the Te Araroa Walkway. And we'll come back after the hear this here from the three days Dreams of Herge. We're talking about walking the length of New Zealand with the Te Araroa Walkway, or the Long Path, um, as it's called as well. Jeff Chappell is my guest to talk about this. And uh, let's, let's go through the various um, sections of it. So if you were a beginner walker or tramper, you know, where would you start? I mean, I suppose you'd, you'd start near wherever you live, I'd imagine. 
Um, but are there easy sections versus sort of harder sections? Yeah. One of the, part of the trail's character is that it doesn't um, steer clear of cities or small towns. So, <coughs> in fact, you could start walking in Auckland. Yeah. Well, there, there's yeah, a, isn't yeah. there that great walkway that goes from harbour to harbour? Sure. Uh, coast to coast. Coast to coast, and yeah. And that's, that's part of our trail. Yeah. So, in Auckland, you could do uh, the coast to coast. You know, starting down at the ferry buildings where the Devonport Ferry comes in and, and ending up at the uh, Onehunga Lagoon. But Te Araroa being what it is, if you wanted to go further than that, then you'd keep walking through Manukau, what used to be Manukau City, yeah. <coughs> now South Auckland. And if you wanted to go further than uh, the city limits there, you're into the Hunuas, and then you go down from there, and then you're following the Waikato River, uh, fundamentally following ah. the river through to Hamilton. So... You can kind of keep going into the blue horizon, or you can just say, okay, that five-hour walk, um, you know, across the isthmus was enough for today and go home. How does the walk approach Auckland from the north? <clears throat> it comes down through Puhoi. The outskirts is Puhoi, so Moyers Hill, if you know it, which is, you know, they've got uh, television um, microwave broadcast up, uh, repeaters up there and things, and you come down over Moyers Hill. You get a, a view of the city from Moyers Hill. You come down into Puhoi, yeah, and we're just right now finishing off um, the track into Puhoi, the last four k's of that Great. track into Puhoi. From Puhoi, and you can stop is, at the tea rooms there, I'd imagine. Get yourself have yourself a, a scone and a yeah, you, you get yourself a, yeah. you get yourself a beer at Puhoi is what you do because they've got a <laughs> beer garden. Yeah, <laughs> and then if you want a scone, you keep on going um, through to the um, dome tea rooms on State Highway One up yeah. there. But um, so. And then you start to hit the city outskirts. But just to give you an idea, it's it's quite a Kiwi trail because when you come into the what used to be the limits of Auckland City, namely up at Okura Estuary, mm. top of Long Bay, how do you get across it? You know, it's, uh, there's about um, three quarters of a kilometre of sh- a sheet of water across there. Now, what we say in our track notes is wait to, wait for low tide and then you wade that one. Okay. And that's precisely the way people used to do it in the old days, you know, wait for the tide, and you wade across, and it's about, you know, just, just knee-deep, really. Yeah, have some patience at that yeah, point. Yeah, have some patience. Yeah. Okay, so that's, so that's some nice, easy stuff around Auckland. What about <coughs> sort of down sort of closer to Wellington? Well, again, in Wellington, you can, if you want a hard track, you come through the Tararuas. The track goes through the Tararuas. Now, be careful, you know, uh, you're up getting close to 1,200, 1,300 metres, and southerlies are blowing, and, you know, people do die in the Tararuas. You've mm. got to be careful with your weather patterns and have a good look, And but you feel very proud of yourself when you go through there. And then you come in on, um, you know, Wellington City's lovely urban trails from there, um, you know, just coming through on the on the northern walkway, and then you link up to what they call the city to sea walkway, and yeah. you finish up touching the sea down at Island Bay. And at that stage, you've either done you know what we were talking about, just a day's walk you're through the city, or if you're a long trail walker, you've come right down from Cape Reinga, you touch the sea at the bottom of the North Island, and you feel very proud of yourself. Yeah. So um, I would imagine though, once you take the ferry to the South Island, that's where things get a little bit more challenging in the South. Yeah. As we know, you know, you've got the Alps and then the um, South Island is the place where you're into pretty um, rugged terrain very often. So to start off with, it's something of a doddle. You go through the Queen Charlotte walkway and that's very popular, almost, you know, like middle class walkway where you can go and you can take your swipe card and, and get restaurant <laughs> meals on the way through your can. Yeah, yeah that's and true. I did when I, when I walked it, you know, I did do those things. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, before you know what's what, you're into the Richmond Range. Now, the Richmond Range would probably be one of our hardest sections. People never used to walk across the range. Mm. When I first walked through and I was just testing and scoping the trail, I was looking at the hut books through the Richmond Range, and, and I was in one upper Wairo hut where there hadn't been another entry uh, for six months. So no one had been through for six months. Before. Amazing. And now, yeah. if you look at the hut books there, they're full of terror walkers saying, yep, come yeah. through, and yep, yep, and, you know, trying to link up with some other terror walker who just went through a day before. And so it's it's getting quite lively. But, but yeah, again, I mean, when I went through, it took mountain radio to get radio, uh, to get... Um, weather reports on the way through so you need to look at a seven day weather forecast and things to make mm. sure you're not going to be trapped because the mists come down in those areas and it's only a like a polled route and things so you have to know what you're doing we wouldn't recommend that for people who are just starting out trapping. okay they should be reasonably experienced or take a take an experienced person with you or take an experienced person with you yeah mm. absolutely mm. yeah
Now, does it go go through the centre of the of the South Island through, through the Alps, or or does it divert off to the coast at any point? No, it never diverts to the coast. It crosses the Alps, I think, uh, three times, and that sounds formidable, uh, but it ain't. Uh, I mean, there are passes through the Alps that Maori discovered and the gold rush uh, miners used later um, that take you through at nine hundred metres altitude. That's not not high, you know, yeah. com- compared to the size of the Alps. So. But there'll be snow in winter there, and, and we have passes that are closed by snow in winter, and we don't recommend it as a winter trail. But in the summer, you breeze over Harpers Pass, you really without too much trouble, you know. Um, and then eventually, of course, ending up all the way down in, in Bluff um, and through Southland. But if you were to start from the beginning and, and to, you know, constantly go, you didn't have a job to go off to or anything like that, or you're on a very long holiday, how long would it take? Well, if you do, say, 30 k's a day, which is possible, well possible, then it would take you 100 days. So you've got to have rest days. So let's add another, you know, um, 20 days for rest days, say, you know, and just resupply and things like that. That would be 120 days. So what's that, four months, roughly four months? Crikey. Yeah. You'd start probably, what, in spring or something? Not too early in spring, <coughs> because as you know, as our weather is shaping up now under new climate patterns, etc., it tends to be pretty wet in spring. Mm. Um, what we recommend is late November, starting at the top and going through, or December, you know, and, and going through, and so that you hit the South Island in, say, late January, February, and all the river flows are low at that time. What are the real standout points for you? Standout points, the one I just mentioned, the Richmond Range, I love it. You know, it's just fabulous, it's like, like Blue Hills just stretching away and stretching away and uh, and uh, there's a place in there called the Red Hills, which is a very unusual geologic place and when you come up to it, you just, your jaw drops and you just say, wow, because it's uh, undersea rock that's been pushed up, you know, by the Alpine Fault and things, yeah. nothing grows on it. So there's these big, bald, red hills and you walk right across them and that's, you know, it's, it's just quite something, it's memorable. So, so I loved that bit. I loved... Um, to go way north again, I love 90 Mile Beach. Why? You know, a lot of people have trouble there. They actually have tendon trouble and things because for days, even though you think, well, it's easy to walk a beach, if you walk on hard, flat sand, which yeah. has got a slight slope down to the west, yeah. you know, and so you're slightly uneven with your gait. You'll end up with one, one leg longer than the other. You do, yeah. <laughs> one leg is hugely longer than the other. No, just <laughs> marginally longer than the other. And <laughs> now what happens is you get tendon pain, and, but you also, and I love this, you get a kind of, you're just on the verge of hallucination because it's like a desert, you see, and, and because there's not a lot of visual information, your mind starts just making things up a little bit. Like I remember at night I was camping there and, and, uh, and the sound of the waves crash, 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 crashing just off to the, to the right. Mm. Uh, I turned into a party sound. It was like, you know, there was music playing and people were having a real good time there down <laughs> on the shore somewhere. <laughs> truly, truly. And another thing that happens is um, you look at lights in the distance and because, again, there's nothing to sort of hold your, your eyes properly, the lights drift up and down right. in the distance. Yeah. So you're not only hearing a party but you're seeing flying saucers down there as well. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't some cra- crazy <coughs> cactus or some weird mushrooms on the way down that beach. Yeah, well, wild, there. Ho- wild horses, but, but none of the other hallucinogens. <laughs> um, that, well, okay, so if, if, you, if you want to take it on, where, where, where's the resource? You know, what can you um, pick up that will tell you about all this? We've got a book. You know, I just put out a book, uh, wrote a book. Uh, it's called, um, you know, um, Te Arara, and it's um, got lovely 3D maps in it that stand up so you can see what sort of terrain you're going through. Cool. Uh, and that book uh, knits in with our website. So although it's got what we call 3D maps, you know, it's really nice to see the trail winding away through what sort of country you're going to be walking. If you really want um, tramper-style maps, i.e. 1 to 50,000 as the standard tramping maps, then you go to our website and you download those maps from the website. Right. And the website is um, is tararoa.org.nz. That's the one, yep. And it is a really great resource up there. It will tell you everything you need to know. Um, Jeff, uh, on behalf of New Zealand, thanks so much for putting it together because <laughs> it's <laughs> what an amazing you know, resource now for it. And, and, and a lot of people are putting it on their bucket list, aren't they? They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must walk the length of New Zealand. Must walk. I would hope that it becomes uh, you know, one of the things that Kiwis... I remember um, Mao Tse Tung 
you know, the great, you know, let's say, dictator of China, saying, you've got to see the Great Wall of China before you die. That was his instruction to the to the minions yeah. below. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, what I hope emerges, you know, not as an instruction, but emerges as <laughs> said, yeah, yeah oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, I intend walking the length of New Zealand. Sometime. Who knows? We might introduce a fat tax and then a, a, an official instruction that you must walk the length of tax, tax reduction if you walk the length of <laughs> yeah, That's it, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Chappell from uh, Te Araroa, uh, the, the Long Pathway. Thanks so much.